All right, welcome to Gundam Explained. My name is Adam. Uh, today we're going to look at Minofsky physics. This is the kind of uh, in-universe explanation for how the Gundams work, really. Um, and, you know, we're going to get real technical here in some ways. So I'm going to put on my uh, nerd glasses for a second. Um, they're not nerd glasses, they're my glasses. Um, and what we're going to do is um, I'm going to kind of read through Minofs Minofsky physics um, Get an understanding of the Minofsky particle, how it actually relates to real life physics, um, <clears throat> and it's just cool stuff. So, um, okay, Minofsky physics. The Minofsky min that's gonna be hard to say. I don't know if I'm gonna go this whole time doing that. The M particle. The M. No, actually, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna say Minofsky every chance I get to make sure that uh, I can pronounce it correctly when needed. Because really, how often are we talking about Minofsky? out out in the open you know during lunch or at the bar hey Minofsky no no okay that rant over uh the Minofsky physics is the fundamental technology advancement in the universal century series so universal century that's typically what I'm mainly covering although I'm not opposed to covering other Gundam timelines just I'm really into universal century and there's a lot of good information but like all the beam weaponry including the lightsaber like beam sabers their nuclear technology and defensive measures uh, are based upon this fictional physics, okay? So according to the Gundam Century, MS Encyclopedia 2003, and Gundam officials, the Minofsky physics all started from the invention of the then seemingly impossible idea of, um, of a nuclear fusion reactor that has a higher theoretical efficiency than classical physics due to the Minofsky particle. So... What's interesting is there's a lot of theoretical physics that talks about ways that we can um, get a, a control over energy that we can use. Uh, and, you know, a lot of theories about this, um, you know, basically when you take, um, you know, particles at that subatomic level and, and being able to, um, uh, yeah, in a safe way, uh, make use of the energy that could output from that. Um Let's see here. Um, yeah, the Minofsky Ionesco. Or is that supposed to be an L? That is a good question. When I see a word I don't know and they have like that could be. It's I. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the Minofsky Ionesco reactor was named after its fictional inventors, Dr. Y.T. Minofsky and Dr. Ionesco. Okay. This reactor was a was radical because it was the first clean nuclear uh, reactor emitting zero neutron radiation. And that's kind of what that theoretical uh, aspect I was talking about with modern physics is being able to yeah, take uh, energy that we can at that subatomic level without the bad side effects. You know, they were talking about neutron radiation um, specifically in this case. Okay, and then it's showing, yeah, an equation there. Um, this is essentially the same equation as used in classical physics with the addition of the fictional Minofsky particle as a catalyst instead of a muon. Okay, that's pretty cool. So a, a muon uh, is an elementary particle similar to the electron with an electric charge of negative 1 E and a spin of a half, but with a uh, much greater mass. Lepton, mu substructure. Okay, so it doesn't, so the muon doesn't have any known substructure. That's almost like breaking down the electron to what are some other base particles. Um, and that's kind of the idea with the Minofsky particle. Like it's broken down to where you get to the Minofsky particle and then that's it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> according to the official guide of Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, the Minofsky Physics Society, while working on the reactor, encountered a strange electromagnetic wave effect in UC0065. So we know that UC, you know, 0079 is when is when the beginning of that, the, you know, the main Gundam War took place. Where by that point, I think they were really able to leverage the Minofsky physics uh, in the particle. Um, you know, some other things about this. Um, Let's see, the helium-3, so helium-3 was used for this. Oh, and then the idea, so let me kind of then get to kind of the point of this. So with the Monofsky particle, this would be used in multiple ways. In one way, it allows for a lot of energy so it can explain the, the Gundam. So, and there's another article we'll get to here in a second, but the idea is the 
Benofsky physics was created to explain Gundams, and it wasn't that the it was because of Minofsky physics in the Gundam fiction that then these Gundams were created. Um, but it's a really cool backstory that, yeah, again, it it's able to go as far as it can with the real world physics and then kind of incorporate its own fiction, but still be seeming practical. And so with these, you have, yeah, what can allow, yeah, the, the energy, yeah, for the Gundam, the power. But the other part of it, oh yeah, and it was talking about like the beam sabers, shields, but the other part of it is this eye field. So I guess the idea is if you were just to discharge uh, Minofsky particles, they will then kind of expand and create what the, and they're calling it a lattice. So it's like a, a structure where it's spreading out. Um, and what that does is in the area that the Minofsky particles are dense, um, I think it, it makes it harder to do communications, um, uh, you know, that's why sometimes you'll see the the Gundams, like, they will shoot, like, a little uh, uh, communication wire out of their finger or something to another in order to speak to them. Or sometimes, you know, they'll touch it. I'm sure there's communication on there. Maybe we'll get to that later. But the idea is this not only creates an explanation for the Gundams, how they can exist, but it also shows uh, where it's showing, like, the limitations to make certain Gundam actions be make more sense um and, and it kind of explains in a way if you you know look at quantum physics and the idea of a um what do they call it the distribution uh probability yeah the probability distribution over like a set um or what do they call it the wave ah i should have um took some notes before i did this video but yeah the wave function there you go so the idea is these particles are kind of doing the same thing where they're filling space but in in this case the space isn't a probability distribution. It's almost like they all exist all in that space. So, um, and then I read something we'll probably get to where it takes like 30 days for uh, Minofsky particles to dissipate from where they were. Um, okay, so what else was I looking at here? So here's Trenov Y. Minofsky. So he's from, yeah, from the Universal Century timeline of the Gundam metaverse. He is regarded as the father of a Minofsky physics. Um, let's see. His story is told in the Stampede, the story of Professor Minofsky. Never seen that, but that is really cool. Or never seen, never read that, but very cool that that exists. Um, uh, it even has birth. Um, oh, no, that's not. Okay. So, oh, he was. Moved to America in 1999. That's something I just came across recently. Oh, he was born in 1983. I was born in 1983. Hilarious. Uh, and that was considered UC0015. Okay. Um, yeah, that's some new stuff for me. Um, however, one of his buddies, Ionesco, for informed him that Anaheim Electronics has agreed to sponsor his research. So Anaheim Electronics, they are the, the main uh, corporation behind the construction of most mobile suits, not just Gundams, but just different mobile suits in general. I mean, they will sell it to the good guys and the bad guys are not really good guys or bad guys. They, they will sell oops, um, their uh, weapons to anybody. You know, that's kind of a theme that popped up in you know, like Last Jedi Stars, but wasn't handled too correctly. Actually, 0083 does a good job of handling the idea that a corporation is selling weapons to uh, multiple parties. So... Uh, and I'll do a video on that. Um, let's see. So it, ha it actually has a cool timeline about him. Um, the particle discovered in 65. Let's see. The existence of this particle was proven in 69. And then, yeah, the one-year war. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, this this is on the Gundam uh, wiki. What is it? Gundam.fandom.com. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, this guy, that's some cool background information. But um, also, um, which one? Yeah, the TV trips had some pretty interesting information about this. Um, let's see. Uh, any instance of a fictional subatomic particle, molecule, element, or form of energy which has rigidly adhered to but useful physics properties. This kind of unobtainium is quite rare in fiction as having more rules to follow tends to make things harder for the writers. Um, and that's pretty cool because I, I think we can name a whole bunch of fiction that has like, fake made up particles or uh, material matter, whatever. Um, 
Unobtainium, I'm pretty sure that's a Marvel uh, Universe thing. Um, unless that was Adamantium or both. I'm not a big Marvel guy. But you get the idea. Tiberium in the um, Command & Conquer franchise. So, um, wait, aside from pure flavoring, having some... St one, I don't know what flavoring means. Strict and behind the verse, slipping into pitfalls. Okay, so this is probably just getting into deep science stuff that I'm not too familiar with, although I recognize this. Okay, in fact, settings with Minofsky physics can be like reality unless known. Okay, so what this is doing, it's talking a lot about, the, this is the TV Tropes website, and, and it talks about uh, what's truly elegant is the metafiction. From a doilist view, Mobile suits made the particle necessary, but from the Watsonian or in-universe view, it's the particle that made the mobile suits necessary. This is my first time, you know, seeing Doyleist to Watsonian, but I get, you know, because um, I was reading this earlier today, but the idea is something that's Doyleist that's from the author's point of view of why something was written, whereas a lot of times in-universe, there's um, the in-universe explanation. So, uh, yeah, like I was bringing up earlier uh it's because of mobile suits in fiction that they have this Minofsky particle explanation. Um, I think that's pretty cool. It, but in yeah, in the in the fiction, it's because of the particle that the Gundams exist. That's cool. That's kind of backstory for those uh, Gundams. Um, let's see. Um, you know, I think that's really it for the Minofsky particles. Let me just go back to see if there's anything. Let's see, in 0071, actually, this is a big deal. 0071, Xeon researchers created the Minofsky Ultra Compact Fusion Reactor. Instead of the conventional magnetic field, this improved version of the Minofsky Ionesco reactor used an eye field to confine and compress the reactor fuel, triggering a fusion reaction. Okay, so the Minofsky particles within the reactor would create its, I don't know if I'm too far from the mic, but create its uh, little... Um, lattice that i guess it's within that that the fusion process would take place um oh similar to the muon catalyzed fusion investigated by real world real world scientists during the 1950s the super efficient design was only a fifth as large as an equivalently powerful minofsky on this reactor for this reason it was okay it was adopted for use on mobile suits um as a standard power plant so that's where it, the mobile suits come into play so it was 0071, uh, Xeon researchers. Yeah, that's something I was kind of familiar with um, without really explanation. So it's really cool to see this, you know, the idea that Xeons kind of led that idea. Um, so Mega Particle Canyon, we, uh, Canon, we see this with some uh, cool um, Gundams here. Um, Okay, so the beam rifle used is a small version of the Mega Particle Cannon. I think we see the Mega Particle Cannon with the Zeta Gundam with the Hayaku Shiki, I believe. And there's probably some other uh, places too. Okay, beam smart gun funnels. Okay, funnel shaped drone units that are designed to remotely control by a new type pilot. So, new type. I'll be doing an another video to explain new types. Uh, in a way, it's kind of a, a force sensitive pilot. But um, there are some really cool uh, Gundam or mobile suits that have these weapons that are pretty much these kind of drones. Um, and they call them fin funnels. They'll like come off and go fly around. But the new types are actually interfacing with the mobile suit in order to get that to happen. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So you know what? Something I'm going to want to get into is... be. Later on, I'll probably do a video about this, is the Minofsky physics and how it integrates with the new types and the cyber new type um, ordeal. Um, okay, later variants include funnel missiles that are guided missiles using funnel-like remote control designs employed in the story. Okay, so it, even though this is based off the original... The original one, um, uh, the the novel, I guess it, it could be in the movie we're seeing a new type of guided uh, missile, fin funnel thing. So, um, well, you know, that's it for um, this little lesson in Minofsky physics. Please ask questions um, in the comments or if there's anything else I need to follow up on or kind of 
dive more deeply into. Uh, I plan to next uh, go over new types. So if anyone has questions about new types or something I need to make sure I'm covering, um, yeah, be sure to let me know. But uh, uh, thanks for watching Gundam Explain. We'll talk later.